I have seen Frozen Fever, and this is my non-spoiler review. I'm also posting a spoiler review, which you can watch by clicking right here when you're ready, and I'm happy to report that there is plenty to spoil. But once again, this is my non-spoiler review, and it's a safe place to talk about the short prior to seeing it without having anything ruined for you. Now I want to start off by saying that you should keep your expectations short because once again this is a short film and there's really only so much they can do in the time allotted. It actually plays more like an abbreviated musical number and seems to really be about taking these characters for a test run to see if they can work outside of the scope of the first film. And I have to say they do very well in this test run. Because what the Frozen film might have lacked in story, it made up for in character development. That's why I think a number of people took to the film so well, because they fell in love with these characters. And that character development serves them very well here in the short. Because the entire cast, and they utilize almost the entire cast, which is great because nobody's favorite gets left out, but all of those characters are able to hit the ground running. Now, one of the things I liked most about the short uh, is that they did such a wonderful job portraying Anna and Elsa's relationship. Uh, they're continuing to build on that. Uh, I think clearly they realize that's the, one of the biggest strengths, if not the biggest strength, out of the first film. Uh, also, Elsa's ice powers. We'll get to that momentarily, but that's really something we can only discuss in the spoiler review. So many questions are raised about them. Uh, but Elsa and Anna's relationship is really the, uh, the, the focal point here uh, at her birthday celebration. And it's so nice to see two Disney princesses, or actually a princess and a queen, hanging out together uh, and just, you know, enjoying each other's company and uh, having fun together. Uh, so often when we see a Disney princess, who's she hanging out with? She's hanging out with her love interest, some kind of magical being, being it a fairy godmother or some other kind of fairy, uh, and then usually some kind of forest animal or enchanted creature. Uh, never really another woman. So to see that here is refreshing. I also think they make Anna and Elsa very relatable. Uh, and for instance, uh, not too much of a spoiler here, but uh, Elsa has a cold, uh, as we know from the synopsis for the short, and she keeps wiping her nose on her sleeve, which I thought was very endearing, uh, and it shows that both sisters have their, their sloppy qualities, as uh, you know, I think many women can relate to. Uh, then, even though they focus so much on the sisters, though, I think it's also really nice that Kristoff isn't presented as some kind of third wheel, uh, and they do actually touch a little bit on his uh, continuing relationship, romantic relationship with Anna. I thought that was very nice. And I think actually all the relationships here are portrayed very naturally, uh, you know, that they really seem organic, that this is a group of friends hanging out. Uh, and it's nice that Elsa and Anna could be friends without pushing Kristoff off, and that he could entertain himself with Sven. Uh, Olaf is also present, of course, but uh, to discuss what happens with him in the short really is to give away too much information. Uh, but he does have some very interesting things to do and some interesting developments. Uh, do I have any complaints? Uh, less than I did with the movie, uh, but I have to say I have uh, three about the short. The first is that Arendelle continues to feel very empty and ill-defined. It still doesn't feel like an actual place. Uh, also, the song. The song actually made more of an impression on me in the trailer for the short than it does in the short. Maybe after I've seen it a few times, and I'm sure many people will see it a couple of times, uh, the song will register more. But I think the short is going by so quickly and there's so much to take in, they really do jam a lot into this uh, a short amount of time. Uh, even, But again, as I said, it not so much happens story-wise. There's a lot of Easter eggs and nods and questions raised. Uh, but the song, I think, kind of takes a back seat to all the information you're devouring and trying to digest. Uh, and, then, and then finally, I really would like to see Elsa act more as a queen. She does refer to herself as a queen, which is great, but she uh, doesn't really, continues not to act in a uh, queenly manner or to implement any of the duties of a queen, which I think considering how many people are aware that she's a queen would be a really uh, great door to open in terms of the Disney princess brand. Uh, you know, royalty that actually has responsibilities and rules, right? With great gowns comes great responsibility. Uh, but Elsa also has powers, uh, and there are so many questions that are raised about her powers in this short, uh, they have to make a sequel just to answer them, and we can discuss those over in the spoiler review. So I'll see you over there. Again, you can click right here to watch. I'll see you over there uh, once you've seen the short, or if you can't help yourself, I'll see you over there in just a click away. Alright, bye.